A few years ago, a woman by the name of Jane, not her real name, but I'm changing names to protect the guilty, was going to a concert with her family. And Jane has this kind of illness where she can't stand very long. And as they were leaving for the concert, she looks at the tickets and realizes it says standing room only. And so she texts her mother to let her know and talks to the other people in the car and says that she's concerned because it's standing room only. Well, when she arrives at the concert, a man sees her and points to her and says, are you in need of a chair and is your name Jane? She's surprised and says, yes, that is my name and I am in need of a chair. And she said, someone called ahead and gave your exact description and said that you would be in need of a chair. When she contacted her mother and all the other people who, who knew about her concern, none of them had called ahead. But texting her mother, she said, the mother said, it may have been your guardian angel. The question we want to ask ourselves is this. Do we believe that God is active in our life? Do we believe that God actually cares about our needs? Or do we have this image of God as this stern parent that we have to please and whose attention we have to get before God will bless us? Because in the readings, we really have this call to remember God's action. In the reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah, The Lord is reminding us that his word goes forth and produces the effect that he desires. And his word is for redemption and salvation. His word is for the recreation of the entire cosmos, beginning with mankind. We also hear in the psalm, from all their distress, God rescues the just. We are to look to him in joy, recognizing that when the poor one, who is us, all of us, calls out, the Lord hears and saves us from our distress. Likewise, Jesus admonishes his disciples that they are not to pray in a way that makes them think that they're getting God to hear them. The idea of the pagans babbling on and on, their pretext was the longer the prayer, the more the God they were praying to would hear them. It was like trying to twist the God's arm in a way. And God in Jesus is reminding us that we are not to pray that way, but we are to pray with confidence, such a confidence that we are to call God Father. Now the church trying to remind us of this confidence, this family relationship that we are supposed to have, has left the Our Father in some archaic language that sometimes we as modern English speakers think is formal English, but it's not. English moved at a certain point and dropped anything that had to do with the familiar and kept All of the stuff that was very formal with the you that we say all the time. We say you to everybody. But that's actually the formal in English. The informal, what you would have used among family members, is thou and thy. The. So when we pray, we want to remember that we are saying this prayer, the Our Father, with that confidence. He's our Father. And we are to have this family confidence that God will hear us and that he will be active in our lives. Amen.